Seeing no questions in the room, we'll go to, oh, one question in the room. Sorry, uh, this is for the minister first. Uh, you just talked about, you just got back from Newfoundland and Labrador. Minister Gilbo was there. Can you talk about your discussions with him, if you had any, and how this announcement today relates to any conversation that you did have with Minister Gil Gilbo in Newfoundland? Yes, uh, so Minister Gilbo uh, and I did have a meeting. Uh, you know, I think what I find very frustrating about the federal government is that they say they engage with provinces, uh, territories, and of course, indigenous communities and businesses across the country. Uh, unfortunately, what we see is a conversation that's often a checkbox and feedback that's never really accepted by the federal government. So in that meeting, I reiterated our opposition to the clean electricity regulations, the upcoming oil and gas emissions cap, which of course we know um, now based on all of the reports that have come out is a production cap on our energy industry, uh, which again is an area of provincial jurisdiction. Uh, I am pleased that this year we were able to get, um, you know, there's a new news release that comes out at the end of these federal, provincial, territorial meetings. Uh, and this year we were able to get the importance of the federal government respecting provincial jurisdiction uh, in that communique. Uh, we also talked about Bill C-59. Uh, we talked about that in the news conference, but it came up uh, in a panel that we had on carbon capture utilization and storage. What the government has done in that amendment to that bill and stifling businesses and quite frankly nonprofits as well uh, about talking about the great work that they're doing for fear of legal costs and other repercussions, um, essentially having to respond to people who just don't like the fossil fuel industry and will do anything and everything to shut down those conversations. It is problematic, and we heard that when we were there. And so, um, you know, we focus on building relationships uh, across the country. We do have allies in other parts of the country. There are other provinces uh, and territories that we are working so closely with to highlight the great work that's being done. Um, Newfoundland also wants to talk about uh, offshore wind. They also want to talk about carbon capture, utilization, and storage, the potential that they have there. Uh, other provinces, Saskatchewan, Ontario, want to talk about SMRs and other emissions reduction technology. Uh, unfortunately, though, the ideology from the federal government uh, sometimes gets in the way. I could probably talk a little longer about that, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it right there. Follow-up question. It's either to yourself, Minister, or to Justin. How were these companies chosen to get this funding? Was there a process that you looked at, or was there just an open call for anyone to apply for? Mm -hmm. I just want to know the process and why you selected these companies over potential other companies. I'll let Justin talk about the specifics, but I, I do just want to articulate, I mean, we're, we work really closely with Emissions Reduction Alberta. Uh, when they are working and their board is working to announce uh, funding calls, of course, we want to make sure it's aligned with uh, where the province and the, the government is headed. Uh, when we look at what we want to see out of these funding calls, we, of course, want to see uh, emissions reduction. And these uh, projects, uh, I believe by 2050, um, commit to reduce 5 million tons of CO2 by 2050. So that's a huge impact, I would say, on the emission side. Um, but of course, they also look at economic viability, job creation. There will be, uh, I believe, over 850 some jobs committed to be created uh, through uh, the, the companies that are receiving this funding today. And then I'll hand it over to Justin to talk just a little bit more about how that actually works. Thank you, Minister. So just in addition to this, yes, it was an open competitive call that was launched several months ago. Typically for an ERA funding call process, we get 10 times the amount of funding ask that we have available for, to fund. So there's a process, a two-stage process with an expression of interest and then a full project proposal for those that get to the second stage. And we have a series of independent reviewers that uh, look at things from technical, uh, greenhouse gas uh, methodology and quantification, uh, business expertise, uh, other sorts of engineering expertise to evaluate these projects on an independent basis. They come together and discuss their reviews and uh, we come to a consensus around which projects meet the highest bar and the highest mark. So it enables us to get a lot of deal flow uh, into one competitive process and to pick the highest quality projects we believe will be best able to deliver on the objectives they have achieved. Thanks. Thank you. Do we have any more questions in the room? Seeing none, we will now go to the phones. Next is Jonathan Bradley from Western Standard. Hello, Minister Schultz. Thank you for taking my question. So you spoke about $44 million being allocated to 21 projects 
to reduce emissions for small and medium-sized businesses. How did you decide on the $44 million amount? Sorry, Jonathan, I just didn't ca catch that last part of your question there. Can you just repeat the last line? How do I? How did you decide on the $44 million amount? And so part of that is that we have dollars uh, every year within our budget that come into the tier fund. That, of course, is the levy uh, on emitters here in Alberta. There are a number of ways that we reinvest uh, those dollars back into emissions reduction uh, and technology and innovation here in Alberta. Uh, part of that is by partnering with Emissions Reduction Alberta. Uh, they have an independent board, so it's not Minister Rebecca Schultz who's not an engineer, uh, you know, going through all of these uh, projects and picking my favorites. This is a board uh, made up of people who are experts, who are investors, uh, who are uh, part of that innovation ecosystem. Uh, we have an excellent board, a very strong one, I would say. And so they, they look at all of the proposals that come forward uh, and then make the decision as to how we're going to invest those dollars. Again, it's a combination of, um, I would say, viability, uh, emissions reduction, Production and of course cost. We also wanted to see projects selected in a variety of sectors. So not just in, in traditional oil and gas, uh, but in biomass, biofuels, agriculture, forestry, electricity, you name it. And, and that's what I think uh, really does set uh, our tier program uh, apart uh, when we look at what's happening across the country. There are lots of folks looking to what we're doing here in Alberta right now. When it comes to the direct amount, uh, you know, what we've seen is in some past years, there's always some money that maybe goes unspent or unused for a variety of different reasons. And so this was the dollar amount that we had available for this competition. Um, but of course, you know, there, there's always going to be more to come. Do you have a okay. follow-up? And my follow-up pertains, yeah, my follow-up pertains to a comment you made earlier on in the press conference. So you spoke about Alberta having a commitment to reducing emissions while respecting the economy or supporting the economy, you could say. Um, why is it important that uh, provinces find a balance between respecting the environment and supporting the economy when it comes to environmental initiatives? I think I caught your question, essentially why we don't want to choose between emissions reduction and supporting our economy. You know, this is what I said to Minister Giba when we first met, which was uh, just over a year ago now, um, that I believe that this is a time where, as someone who is elected to represent everyday, hardworking people of Alberta, that I would hope that governments could put ideology aside and really do the right thing to address all of the concerns that Canadians have, the top of which right now is absolutely affordability. I can tell you I was in Washington last, uh, maybe two weeks ago, the conversation there was about energy security and reliability. We hear that too. We saw it here in January. So you cannot talk about the environment and emissions reduction without talking about jobs. A strong economy that allows us to invest in the services people rely on, like healthcare, like education, like infrastructure for a growing uh, population that we see here, but also making sure that the people that I'm elected to represent, Albertans, have access to safe, affordable, reliable energy. Um, that will not go away. And unfortunately, what we've seen from the federal government is really just punitive policies that are driven uh, to shut down one aspect of our economy, which puts people, jobs, livelihoods, and the overall Alberta and Canadian economies at risk. I think that that's irresponsible, um, you know, and I, and I think other provinces are seeing it as well. I mean, in Atlantic Canada, I can tell you uh, the amount of times they raise the carbon tax and the impacts that that has on everyday people, on small businesses. We heard from small businesses who pay um, thousands and thousands of dollars every single month on a carbon tax um, that isn't, quite frankly, reducing emissions. I think what we're doing here really is leading the way. And Alberta's record is a good one. We are reducing emissions every single day. Per barrel emissions intensity in the oil sands has gone down. Electricity emissions have gone down by 53%. Our methane emissions reduction, and I'm going to say thanks in part to a lot of the, the programs and investments made through our tier fund, uh, have allowed us to hit our 45% methane emissions reduction goal three years ahead of schedule, and even better, for $600 million less cost than if we had done things the way that the federal government wanted to do them. That's why we 
uh, certainly the Premier, Premier Danielle Smith, um, is a huge advocate in essentially just talking about how important it is for our provincial jurisdiction to be protected. How can you tell I've been talking about this for three days ad nauseum and I get a little passionate about it, but I, I think that that's why we're so fortunate to have a leader and a premier who's uh, really leading the charge in that conversation. And then we're seeing other governments and other provinces and territories across the country saying, you know what, we see what's going on and we, and we want to work with you too. So, you know, I think common sense over ideology and I, I'm proud to talk about Alberta's record uh, and I do talk about Alberta's record every single day, um, but we absolutely can't meet some, you know, uh, and I would say for some, the, the goal isn't net zero, it's absolute zero fossil fuels because they don't like our energy industry. We can't do that. We can't lose those jobs. We can't um, risk our economy and the livelihoods of everyday people. Thank you, I'll just Minister. That is Lisa Johnson at the Canadian Press. Hi, can you hear me? Okay, I have a question for Justin. Yes, go ahead. Hi, thanks. I'm just looking at your um, annual report from 22-23. Um, and I see a lot of forward projections on cumulative emissions reductions by 2050, for example. But I'm wondering, just looking backwards, are you guys measuring the emissions reductions from the projects that you have funded already, projects that have come to completion? Um, am, am I missing something in this annual report here, or can you point me in the direction of where that measurement might be? Sorry, can you repeat the last sentence? It just came in a little choppy. Oh, sure, yeah. I'm just trying to figure out where and how you're measuring emissions reductions for the projects that you've already funded in, in past years. Yes. Um, is that going, yeah, where, where would I find that? Yes. So we have a, a third party independent verification process for measuring all of our emissions. And so the projects that we're initiating funding, there's a projection on the emissions they're going to reduce. And then we, we check that at the completion of the project as to, uh, and verifying that those emission reductions have actually taken place. So there's a mix of both projections and actual reductions in that forecast that you see. I think there's a 2030 and a 2050 forecast, uh, so it's a mix, but would be happy to uh, talk to you further about more detailed uh, measures um, offline. 